According to WHO globally, it is estimated that at least 2.2 billion people have a vision impairment or blindness, of whom at least 1 billion have a vision impairment that could have been prevented or is yet to be addressed. Effective interventions are available for health promotion, prevention, treatment and rehabilitation to address the entire range of needs associated with eye conditions and visual impairment in some cases. And joining us live in the studio is Afegwa Mohamed Shwaibu, is the principal Nigeria Farmcraft Center for the Blind. It's good to have you join us. Thank you very much. It's my you pleasure. have a very interesting name. You're, ve you're very Nigerian, well rounded. You have a northern and southern name. It's very nice. Yes, yes. Thank uh, you. How long have you been visually impaired? Uh, since, uh, well, I said I got visually impaired. I had my first surgery when I was 15 months old. So I started using glasses when I was in primary one. Wow. So I've been visually impaired right from wow. birth. But I totally, I lost my sight totally in 2010 due to retinal detachment. Oh my goodness. I don't even want to go into it because I'm sure you're going to tell me the big grammar that comes with it. But you represent Famcraft Center for the Blind. Tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, I'm actually the principal of a Nigerian Famcraft Center for the Blind. Mm -hmm. uh, it was under Federal Minister of Women Affairs and Social Development. Mm -hmm. But currently, we are under the Federal Minister of uh, Humanitarian Affairs, mm -hmm. uh, Disaster Management, and Social Development. Okay. Uh, the center was actually established in 1957 by the Royal Commonwealth Society for the Blind mm -hmm. in 1957. So it got it handed over to the federal uh, government in 1960, and uh, we trained visually impaired uh, uh, persons from the age between 18 to 50 years to be self-reliant into different kinds of 18 vocations. 18 to 50. Yes, into different uh, vocations from all parts of the federation. That's including federal capital territory. We take three candidates from each state and uh, we train them uh, in the center for just a one year program. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Into dif different, different kind of skills like uh, craft, uh, agricultural science, braille reading, typewriting, computer science, uh, home and body care products, uh, music, uh, soap making, and so many other things that they actually. Wow. Uh, being taught in the center. This is very interesting. You sound very well spoken, you know, uh, as a teacher. Um, did you start out as a teacher or you developed interest after you found out that you needed to help people that were visually impaired? Yeah, I actually read civil engineering in Amadou Bele University, Zaria. I was using glasses Look then. at the irony. <laughs> <laughs> so, and again, you know, when I graduated and I felt that, look, I don't uh, need to, I, had to I, I actually served in a in the blind school, where I'm working right now, that's mm. where I did my youth service. Wow. And even when I had my surgery in 1995, the doctor told me that I have to go to a blind school to go and learn uh, Braille and typewriting, which I spent mm -hmm. uh, one year course at uh, the Vocational Training Center for the Blind at Oshodi. Mm. And um, I picked interest in working in the blind school. And when I finished service uh, in 1999, so I had to uh, get engaged in the school. I was employed in 2001 and uh, since then I've been planning to work very, very interesting. I became the vice principal in 2008 and then um, in 2010, that was when I lost my sight. I've been having a okay. very good passion for this job and I'm enjoying it. It's a great thing. I like that you're passionate because of the, the way you sound as you're talking about it. You have like a big smile on your face. <laughs> it's like a calling. Yes. But let's talk about how visually impaired people um, fair in Nigeria? Uh, do you think that the environment is friendly to people who are impaired? Um, also, I'm sure that you go to a shopping mall or you want to go to take a walk down the road. How environmentally friendly is the Nigerian environment for those who are visually impaired? Uh, well, it's not quite friendly at all. And uh, I'm very sure with the uh, Disability Act that has been set upon, we pray that within five years, most of the buildings and roads and everywhere will actually be accessible. In right, even right now in my, my, my center, even the, the road that uh, is connected, the house that, is, that, is quite, uh, that connects to our center, to center, is not very, very accessible. The wow. road is very, very bad, it's not motorable. And if rain should fall, the place is not even good oh at dear. all. Oh and just imagine visual impaired persons actually oh passing through that route. So those are one of, one of the challenges that we actually have uh, uh, in our center. And generally, accessibility is one of the priority that the government should actually uh, put in place. I was about to say that because in other countries, you have people obeying traffic laws where, you know, at a, uh, at a zebra crossing, you could cross 
normally, but in Nigeria, you have to run across. You have to. And for a visually impaired person, that's not a good idea. At all. Uh, with the Disability Act, yes, it's a good thing, but how is your organization bringing these issues to the government's table. You told me earlier on that you work with the uh, Federal Ministry of, of Affairs and Social Development. How are you liaising with the necessary bodies to get this to the table of Mr. President? Uh, yeah, the Department of Rehabilitation, uh, headed by uh, Mrs. Uh, Nkechi Ngokwe, is actually uh, creating more awareness to see how uh, the, the, these policies will actually be in place. Uh, because uh, we are here in Lagos, they are in Abuja, uh, the headquarters in Abuja, that's the department, and they are doing a lot to see how uh, th uh, those policies will actually be implemented. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to talk about government interventions. Yeah. Yes, the Act, yes, everybody's talking about the Act, but aside from that, there has to be some actions following up aside from the Act. The Act will take a process before, you know, it starts getting implemented, but how many people really get access to um, schools like yours? How many people are, is there an awareness of sorts? Is government also collaborating with you to give them brails, to give them uh, a walking stick, you know, and all of those things? Is it, is it available? Uh, yes, uh, in our centre, uh, the moment uh, one is actually ad admitted into the centre uh, is the responsibility of uh, the, the government to give them uh, 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 aids and appliances like that of the white cane. Mm -hmm. uh, they give them white cane. Each person cane, is, yes, yes I call white it cane. Stick, they, yes. They, give, they give them a white cane. Each person is given a white cane. And um, uh, um, the, this, we collaborate with the, with the state government and local government because we expect that after this training in our center for one year, we expect that uh, the state actually give the students uh, some kind of uh, employment mm -hmm. or even give them some kind of grant to start up with a kind of uh, to trade they've actually learned from from the center. Mm -hmm. uh, there's actually a uh, misconception about persons with disabilities uh, in the country and which will, it's just, it's just part of it that we're creating awareness about mm -hmm. that. Uh, jobs should be given to visually impaired or even any form of disability. There shouldn't be kind of a discrimination. I'm sorry, I don't want to bust your bubbles. You're making a very good uh, assertion here, but what about starting with giving you guys an opportunity to vote? Because you see, the electioneering process is supposed to carry everyone along. And I, the last time I saw people living with disabilities in Nigeria, they were complaining that they never really are carried along. Because if you are able to vote certain people into power, then you can demand for these things to be done for you. Well, in the election, I think the last election that was carried out, uh, the uh, persons with disability actually uh, participated in the last election that was carried out, and a lot of awareness because there's a kind of partnership between uh, persons with disability with uh, INEC. Uh, which they created. The only challenge that uh, maybe uh, probably the visual people had is that uh, there are no uh, signs like a braille description for them to know whether they're actually voting for the right person. Mm -hmm. So that's just one of the challenges I know I think they, they, they actually uh, encountered. They'll have to ask, get someone that is sighted to assist them to place their fingerprint on the right person. They f feel that uh, is actually the right person for them to vote for. And finally, in closing, what do you think expressly people living with visual impairments need as we speak? If you were to speak to Mr. President right now, what would be your demand? Uh, well, free education, uh, access to free medical care, mm -hmm. uh, accommodation. Uh, and maybe jobs. Jobs, yeah, jobs. And also uh, those that are actually need some grants, they should be given some kind of uh, uh, grants to start up with, uh, with some trainings that uh, they, I mean, skills that they actually learn from. And accommodation too. Mm -hmm. 